Hey guys, welcome back. So this week is another shorty video. So I figured what I wanted to get into with some of my videos coming up is I wanted to talk about the score editor and Pro Tools. But since today is just a short video and there are a few details that would be handy to know before you even get into the score editor, what I figured we would do today is talk about changing the key signature meter and tempo in Pro Tools. So you've probably seen me talk about the rulers in Pro Tools and those are these things right here along the top of our edit window. So they do things like show us where we are in the session in terms of minutes and seconds, time code, stuff like that. If we add a marker to a session, we will see it along the markers ruler. There's a bunch of different rulers that we can display. And if we hit this menu here, and this should be kind of familiar to you guys if you've seen my other videos, we can display or hide these rulers here, right? So we have tempo, meter, key, and chords as well. And so all four of these, yeah, that's four. All four of these are musically related terms, right? So I'm just going to show these so we can see them. And you know, we can also go view and then rulers and we can display or hide them here as well. Okay, so when we look at these rulers here in Pro Tools, we'll see the default is C major and 4-4. Four, four. And I believe the tempo defaults like 120. Yeah, the default's 120. And so basically for these three things, tempo, meter, and key, you can just mess with them here on the rulers. There's other ways to access them. I might show you guys that in a second. But basically for any of these, you can just hit the plus sign to either add a change or change the value for the whole session. So I'm just gonna hit the plus sign here for tempo and I can make the whole tempo of the whole piece whatever I want. So let's say 160. I can change the note values for that BPM, right? Which will affect it. And I can either have it place where my cursor is right now, which is this location here, or I can have it go 110 and that's at the start. It's kind of up to you. If I then want to add a tempo change, I can hit the plus sign here. I can make it 120, I can hit okay. And so once we have these changes in place, whether it's tempo, meter, or key, you can usually then drag it around as well if you like. And you know how often you do that. Um, you know, you might not do that that often, but you can if you want to. Uh, you can usually also double click on the little icon here for these changes and adjust them as you wish, right? So you can change where they're located, you can change what they are, right? You can change the resolution and you just hit okay. So similarly, I can change the meter if I want. So I can make this, for example, 6.8, and I can leave it here to make it a change in meter. I can double click on this here to change the initial starting meter. I can change, let's see, I didn't touch on this click value here. I can change the resolution of the click here. So that's for when we have a click track in play. And then to change the key, it's kind of the same thing. So you can either double click on the icon here or you can hit the plus sign, right? And so when we're in this key change window, the default is to display the different major keys here. And it's kind of cool, we can see the actual key signature here as well. So that kind of helps you remember, helps jog your memory if um, you're not as brushed up to date on this stuff. And if you want a refresher on this stuff, I actually have a video where I went over the circle of fifths. So I'll put that up on the screen somewhere for you guys. But basically we have the major keys, you can switch over to the minor keys here. And you'll notice that here we're showing the relative minors. So where C major was here, when we switch it over, we're now seeing A minor, which is the relative minor for C major, right? So we can change the key to whatever we want here. And then just like with tempo and meter, we can choose the location for that change, right? So we can either put it at the beginning of the session or we can place it wherever we want it in the session, right? So we pick that start location for the key, right? And then we can have it go to, and then we pick the end location basically. So we can go to the next key signature, we can go to a specific point, or we can go to the end of the session, right? So yeah, that's basically it. And another thing to note is I think with meter and key, we cannot drag the location around like we can with tempo here. So yeah, it looks like it's not, yeah. So you can't do that with these. So if you wanna change the location of these, you just double click on the icon or you can use the plus sign as well, right? To make a new change or whatever. Um, so that's basically that. Another thing is with these, you could build a whole section of a song. Like let's say you're working on the bridge or whatever it is you're working on. And then you can, so you can start with whatever section of the song you want. And then you can really easily drag this whole thing out if you click on this little red icon here. So that's another way that you can build your song. Um, you will want to drag your actual audio over, right? But um, that's basically it. 
So that's changing tempo, meter, and key. And so this is really handy when you're working in music, right? They're musical terms, so that's kind of a duh type of thing to say. But um, it's really handy for that. It's really handy for working with MIDI. So if you're working with MIDI on like an instrument track or what have you, it's really handy for that. It's good to know if you're doing any kind of musical work. So I just wanted to show you guys that. And then I think eventually, kind of soon, I'm going to work in the score editor and show you guys the score editor a bit more. So let me know if you like that idea in the comments below. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And you know, as always, if you like this video, please do all the things that YouTube people like, right? So like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And if you wanna support my channel more directly, I do have a Patreon. It's at patreon.com slash noise. And my patrons do get access to additional content. So that's about all I have time for today, guys. I come out with new videos every Wednesday and thank you for watching. Okay.